My name is Ksenia Krivonogova, I'm, and I'm, I've worked in technology sphere for over than 15 years. I've started from the system spe support specialist role and move it through roles like UA, system analyst, team leader, to head of system analyst department in big Russian bank. Now I'm an operation manager in a, uh, and agile coach in uh, Exynos payments department. And if on my early roles I was mostly meeting attendee, uh, started as a team lead position, I become a person who creates meeting a lot. And meetings started taking up a larger part of my time. There were days when I had no breaks at all, not even for snakes or, pardon for details, visiting the restroom. It was my pain. My real work started after meetings is over. That means after 6 p.m. And that's why I want to speak with you today about the meetings. Uh, it was about previous time, previous slide. <laughs> uh, when I was preparing to this meeting, I got curious how deals are with meetings in Exynos. And you can see on the screen the statistics for payments team leaders. And you, as you can see, uh, payment leader spent on average 20 hours per week in meetings. 20 hours, guys. It's 50% of our full work week. And for the year, it's more than 1,000 hours. It's huge, isn't it? Who have approximately the same schedule? Please raise your hands. I see most of you share this struggle. And today, I suggest to speak about this, what we can do with this, how we can make our schedule less loaded. Uh, the core of everything is quantity and the quality of meetings. If there are too many meetings, we have no time for anything else. We stop preparing for the upcoming meetings, and they become less and less effective. We can't manage to solve all issues during the meeting and end up with creating another one. It creates a circle loop, closed loop. And I suggest to look at this from two points of view, when I'm a participant and when I'm an owner. And let's start from the first one, when I'm a participant. What we can do to unload our calendar? And of course, the simple thing, we can don't accept unnecessary meetings. But key question, what is unnecessary meeting? Do you have? Meetings without description or agenda. Please raise your hands who have. Yeah, me too, a lot. And as a participant, of course, I can decline such meetings. But for me, it feels a bit rude, honestly. And I prefer to ask the initiator why he creates this meeting and what he expends except what he expects from me. And after that, I make my decision to go or not to go. Uh, in addition, it's always a matter of mindfulness and honesty. honesty. Uh, answer to yourself, can I contribute to this meeting? Will I really helpful for it? And if no, don't afraid to decline it. If yes, go and participate. The next thing I can do as a participant, delegate. It's not necessary to attend all meetings personally. You can uh, entrust it to another team member, especially if you are a team leader. Uh, or, for example, if you see that there are uh, several participants, three, for example, uh, are invited to the meeting, you can discuss it internally and choose one representative it will save you two team hours. And the next thing, previously we spoke about the quantity of the meeting, but let's talk about quality. The key thing for the participant, surprisingly, is participation. 
Have you ever heard the phrase? Sorry, could you repeat the question? I've got distracted. And many times, yeah, many times. Come on, guys. We have so few time. Why be wasted? If we understand that the meeting is not useful, skip it. If, you, if it is, participate, not distract on charts or other parallel activities. Respect your time. Or, for example, if you find yourself in the meeting and only there you can understand you're not needed, don't hesitate, apologize and leave. It's more honest than staying and not listening. And that's it about participants and let's uh, look from the owner point of view. What can we do as an owner? Of course, we have a much broader list of options. And first thing is don't create unnecessary meetings. Okay, but what is a necessary meeting if I'm an owner? If I uh, really want to solve my question or achieve my goal, they are all like important. <laughs> And we come close to the cornerstone question of our today's discussion, to meet or not to meet. And there are numerous alternatives for the meetings. It's chat, chats, emails, wikis, video records, uh, shared documents, and others. But usually, sometimes we even don't consider them. We just create another one meeting because we are in a hurry because we get used to. So next, next time you'll reach out to schedule another meeting, pause and think, do you really need it? A lot of questions can be solved without organizing a meeting. Short questions can be discussed in the uh, chat, in the thread, or on the short call. One-to-many presentation can be recorded and posted in Wiki and discussed, in, posted in the Wiki, and uh, people can use one and a half speed to view it, and they will save their time. Decisions supported by the majority can be described and posted in the chat, for example, and discussed in, uh, in the thread and it will be faster than collecting the meeting. Uh, collection options, voting are also perfectly well can be done uh, via different tools like Google Forms, Slido, and many others. And even reporting. Um, my experience showed that reporting take a second place after Scrum Ritual meetings. Uh, even this reporting can be perfectly well done without organizing a meeting. But frankly speaking, I usually create such meetings, such slot in the calendar. But at the day of such meeting, I'll write in the chat and ask guys, guys, do we have any problems, any potential delays or questions for discussion? If none are found, I request them to post the status in the chat and cancel the meeting. And practice shows that even problems arise, they are often solved through a short discussion in the thread. But of course, there are cases when we really need a meeting. And there are different types of brainstorms, complicated topics without obvious solution trainings, when we get a new skill and need, need to practice it. And meetings connected with emotions, both positive, negative, uh, different uh, feedback sessions, performance review, team buildings, and others. Meeting is not good or bad. It's just a tool, the way for achieving your goal and you, as an owner, have to use it properly. When you're considering run meeting or not, remember that refusing the meeting requires responsibility. You must, be, you must trust your team 
and be sure that they will go through documents, through materials, they will make the surveys or view video records you shared with them. Take this decision with open eyes. And let's speak about the quality of the meeting. Next, sorry, we speak about, <laughs> um, next we can do, we can create meeting short uh, to unload our calendar. It sounds easier, and it can be even easier if we change default meeting time in our calendar settings. In Exynos, we use Google, and the default time for the whole company is 45 minutes. But I've changed my settings to 30, because it's more than enough for majority of questions. If I understand the question is short, I create it for 15 minutes. It allows other participants to better plan their time. And one more thing, if you, for example, a team leader, and you have a development team, more than 10 people, for example, and you start noticing that uh, Scrum rituals become more and more time, uh, your daily standards last for over 30 minutes, an hour is not enough for the retrospective. It's time for splitting your team. Team will thank you. Small teams allow to reduce the context uh, and reducing the number of discussion points. And as a result, your meetings will be more efficient. And now we'll speak about quality of the meeting. And the key thing, of course, it is preparation. If we spend at least five, 10 minutes and answer the question, why am I creating this meeting? What outcome do I want to achieve? And what can I do to make the meeting more efficient? I'm sure these questions will lead you to the correct, to the correct actions. In one case, you will share materials in advance and ask your team to view it. In other cases, you can understand that it's beneficial to collect opinions in advance if it can affect the discussion. In some instances, you'll create a mirror board for discussion. Uh, next thing is creating shared context. We all view reality through our own filters. And if I'm really familiar with the topic, I've spoke about it with several teams a lot of times, I might get an impression that all understand the subject as I do. But it's not, it's, it's not always true. To avoid misunderstanding, spend a few time and remind the team, why we have gathered here, what problem are we solving, and, and what information do we have for current moment. Speak it out and allow questions to be asked right here, not in the middle of heated discussion. And the next, of course, visualization. Many people try to uh, find hard to make through information in their minds. And it's, it's much easier when you have picture before your eyes. Uh, you can visualize all you can. Create diagrams for architecture, for business processes, or use mirror for visualization of discussion. For example, you have to conduct comparison analysis for two options with uh, advantages and disadvantages. You can speak it or describe it out loud. But I assure you, starting from the third or fourth points, people start forgetting what was at the beginning. Or you can prepare visu visualization. It's much easier, isn't it? We see that there are two options with uh, process and concepts colored in different, um, in red and green. So use it uh, where you can. 
And the next thing, small groups. Use it for increasing in engagement. For example, you have a meeting with 10 plus people and you want everyone to participate without silent observers. You can split them into small groups for three, four people and organize discussions in breakout rooms. This way, you will show that all opinions will be taken into consideration. Uh, the next one is time in silence. If you need people to reflect, embrace moment, moments of silence. This will help to improve the quality of ideas and give people opportunity to focus. The most common example is uh, idea or problem generation at retrospective. Also keep in mind that reading in silence is much faster than describing out loud. And you can also use it at the retrospective for sharing positive moments. And of course, add the agenda to your meetings, follow the agenda and keep the timing. And you can find uh, more useful tips how to make your meetings more efficient in the book of Sam Kainer you see on the screen. All we discussed previously can form a basis for your meeting culture and few more useful practices. Book slots for focusing. Only you know your most productive time. So book these slots in your calendar and use for maximizing, maximizing efficiency. You can arrange team agreements. For example, not create meeting in the first half of the day or in the second, whatever suits you more. Try great practice of meeting free day. We have it like a company-wide policy in Exynos, and we have Thursday without meetings. And yeah, Thursday is today. That's why we could came here. <laughs> we had no meetings. Uh, if it's not a case for the whole your company, you can discuss it and arrange on a team level. And of course, use retrospectives for improving your meetings. All we discussed today, to wrap up, uh, of course, to, tomorrow we won't wake up in a perfect unicorn world without the meeting. But if tomorrow we don't create at least one unnecessary meeting or create useful one for 30 minutes instead of an hour, it's definitely a step forward. Thank you for attention. It was Ksenia, and I'm ready to answer your questions. Uh, I have a question regarding your advice of create some uh, pre-recorded videos or uh, wiki pages or whatnot. And in my opinion, it really does uh, sound great, but in my experience, it doesn't really work uh, for the reason that if you're on a meeting, you are in the moment and plenty of people around of you, uh, making the same thing as you, and you feel more engaged, you probably should uh, ask a question along the way. Uh, and it's, uh, in my experience, again, harder to concentrate while you're lazily scrolling the wiki and you have to read something. Um, so how do you tackle this kind of issue and whether it's relevant to you? Yeah, yeah, uh, thank you for the question. It's a great one. It's... Uh, a moment about several moments. First, think about responsibility. When you ask your team to go through video records, you must be sure they will do. And you can, for example, uh, if you're sure, do like this. You can share, uh, ask guys to view, and then if you need to do something after it, take some uh, decisions. You can create, organize a short meeting and discuss this point. It uh, would be beneficial because guys will prepare. It. They will um, like prepare their questions, and you can start not from the scratch, 
but for from like uh, created opinions maybe in their heads. Uh, of course, if your meetings has their pluses and their minuses, and every time you uh, take this decision, you like uh, weigh them. Uh, what uh, is important for you for now? If it is important to create engagement atmosphere, it is about emotions. Of course, we go to the meeting. If it's mostly about uh, like uh, to view the material, I would suggest uh, not to do it uh, as a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have more questions? Uh, you described like uh, how to make the um, meetings uh, efficient, and there was something like uh, make an agenda, something like that. But um, do you have like uh, some other recommendation? I mean, it's like for prepare the meeting, but how to keep it efficient during the meeting and after the meeting? Maybe some kind of recommendation. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, thank you for the question. It is about facilitate mostly about facilitation. Uh, but facilitation includes preparation also, and uh, I believe that it's the most crucial part. But uh, there are a lot of techniques how make um, meetings, how run meetings smoothly. It's about like sharing context, sharing agenda, uh, focusing on the topic, and of course, after the meeting, if you want people to do something after it, you must write meeting notes, action points, and ideally, if people will be tucked there, like we all know, if I'm tucked in the message, I start to read it carefully, not like other ones. So uh, my presentation was not about facilitation. There are a lot, a lot of interesting questions, but my short answer will be like that. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, here is the second question. Uh, I was wondering about your, uh, you were talking about like necessary and unnecessary meeting, and I was wondering about your opinion about, about 101 meeting, because like we are all the, the kind of team leaders here, and we had, like, if it's a big team, it's lots of one-on-one -on -one meetings, so uh, what do you think about them? Is it necessary or kind of unnecessary? Yeah, yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, it's on my point of view, absolutely necessary, because it's mostly about emotions, about contact with person. Uh, you can look at him, like, uh, screen his face, and of course it's a meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. I'd like to ask you, could you personally call the skill of, you know, executing uh, the meetings as a soft skill? And if so, uh, does your company test it and the, the, you know, interview before hiring people? Thank you for the presentation. And I think it can be a part of <laughs> Julius. <laughs> Um, speech because, of course, um, if uh, you expect from the role that this person will organize meetings, you expect that he knows how to do it. And uh, I mentioned facilitation, like uh, te teach us how to do it. And uh, if you for looking for it in a person, of course, you can ask uh, the person on the interview how to do it or just give him uh, example real situation or you are in the meeting uh, people got get distracted they sit in without camera what will you do and I of course it was ask such questions at the uh, sorry guys <laughs> at the in interview <laughs> I just wanted to say a couple words about that because usually when people speak about uh, soft skills, they mean some kind of personal ability. Uh, but here we are talking about real skill, skill that you can gain. Uh, for my opinion, it's important to mention it. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, it's uh, close. I think uh, hard skills and soft skills, you can know all about facilitation. Your soft skills don't allow you to be great on this. And it's like to close things. Thank you so much. Thank you again. I would like to ask you that you told us, you taught us that 
For example, we have uh, necessary and unnecessary meetings. And you told us that how to recognize unnecessary meetings. And probably you told us the same for your direct employers. Have you ever had this experience before that your direct employer declined your meeting because he recognized that your meeting was unnecessary for him and what you did at that moment? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the question. It's like <laughs> amazing one. Uh, honestly, no. I never had su such cases. But if we imagine that uh, situation uh, like appears and a uh, person came to me, come to me with a uh, uh, right, honestly, right question. Why do you want me to come to the meeting? What do you want to uh, discuss with me? And it's a valued question. If, and <laughs> I should uh, be ready to answer to it. And I would um, look at this person, uh, at my team member, as a, like, to the pe uh, to a person who respect that uh, his time and like it will be a positive moment for me thank you